Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. MathBlog. This lesson is adding and subtracting decimals. And don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Let's go to that site real quick. Here's MrMathBlog.com. And then, uh, well, this is in the sixth grade uh, California. So there's a sixth grade um, uh, for the rest of the nation, and then California's weird. So uh, if you're in watching this lesson, you, you click uh, the California lesson, and then if you scroll down, it'll go right down below uh, 5.1. So I'm going to be loading that up uh, as soon as we get done with this here. So anyways, uh, there's our common core strand for our teachers. And our question is, how do we add and subtract uh, decimals right here? Okay, so so recall that um, uh, using decimals uh, to model um, to model de de I'm sorry, decimal grids. Do you recall doing decimal grids? I'm sorry, I'm a tongue twister here. So for example, um, uh, 0.25, which is the same as this ends in the hundredth spot, so 25 hundredths, so 25 hundredths, can be modeled on a 10 by 10 grid. Okay, so here's a 10 by 10 grid, and here's 10 of them, here's 20 of them, and then 5 more. So here's 25 hundredths out of the 100 right here. There's 25 of them shaded. So we're going to be using that uh, for the uh, first few parts of this. and. Uh, to talk about hundreds and stuff and adding uh, decimals. All right, so here we go. A chemist uh, combines uh, 0.17, which is the same as 17 hundredths milliliters, that's what ML stands for, of water, and 0.49, which is 49 hundredths, because that ends in the hundredth spot. There's the tenths, there's the hundredths. So 49 hundredths milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in a beaker. So how much total liquid is in the beaker? All right, so so here's a 10 by 10 square right here. So there's 100 little squares in here because there's 10 going down and 10 going across. So there's 100 squares right here, okay? And then so how many uh, grid squares uh, should we shade to, to show the 0.17 or the 1700 milliliters of water? Okay, well, we're going to say shade 17 because uh, 0.17 is the same as 1700. How about... How about for the 0.49 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide? Well, that we're going to do 49 um, uh, because 40, 0.49 means uh, 49 hundredths. So let's go ahead and use the grid to um, uh, to model this, and then uh, we'll use different colors right here. So let's do the the 0.17 first. Here's 0.17, so we're going to shade in 17. 17 of these right here. So here's 10 right here, and here's 7 right here. All right, now we're going to shade. 49, so we're going to shade 49 to show 0.49 or 49 hundredths right here. So if this is 3 right here, we'll shade up this one right here. And then we'll, um, so this will be 3, and then so 3 away from 49 squares, there's going to be 46 more. So this would be 10, and then this row, or this uh, row would be 20, 30, 40, and then 6 more right there. Okay, so there's our 49 um uh, squares right there. So how much total liquid is in the beaker? Okay, well, okay, so it's just how many are shaded. So here's 10, here's 20, even those two colors. Here's 30, 40, 50, 60, and then it looks like 66 right there. Okay, so 66 milliliters of liquid that's in that beaker right there. All right, so uh, let's do that again with these guys. So show how to shade each grid to, to represent each sum, then find the sum. Okay, so let's do the same thing. So 0.24 will shade that in gray. So we'll shade 24 squares in gray. 24 out of these out of these hundred right there. There's 24 right there. So that's 24 hundredths right there. So uh, so here is uh, six right here. So if we take six off of that, there's going to be 65 more past this. So we'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then we'll shade five over here. So let's shade the 0.71 right there, and then those add up to how many of them are shaded. Well, all of them except five of them are shaded, so 95 out of the 100 are shaded, or 0.95. So this represents uh, 95 hundredths, okay? All right, so let's do the same right here. Here's 0 0.08, here's 0 0.65, and then those add up to uh, 73 hundredths. 73 out of the 100 squares are shaded right there. All right, so adding decimals is similar to adding whole numbers, and you guys probably knew this already. So you just first align the numbers in the place values right there. Just make sure that the decimals line up and then just start at the right and regroup when necessary, okay? And then bring down uh, the decimal point in your answer. Okay, so here we go. Here's our first example. Brett likes riding bicycles. Brett uh, rode his bicycle 3.12 miles on Monday and 4.7 miles on Tuesday. How many miles did he ride in all? Okay, 
Well, if we go ahead and add, let's go ahead and uh, align the decimal points up. So uh, here's our 3.12 and 4.7, and make sure the decimals are lined up so we can just go ahead and add. And then there's nothing there, so we're going to go ahead and put a zero there. So let's add a zero in the placeholder right there. Okay, and then we'll just add from right to left. Okay, so we'll add 2 plus 0 is 2, and then we'll add uh, 1 plus 7 is 8, and then um, the decimal, we just slide it down, and then 3 plus 4 is 7, so we get uh, 7.82. So that means Brett rode 7.82 miles in all on Monday and Tuesday right there, okay? All right, so uh, let to, to estimate, we can check our answer to see if it's reasonable by rounding the decimals to the nearest whole number. So let's uh, do a quick estimate right here. So here's Brett's uh, Monday ride and, and Tuesday ride. So let's round this to the nearest whole number. This rounds to 3. This rounds to 5. So 3 plus 5, when we add those up, it's going to get us 8 right there. And since our answer, 8 uh, is close to since 8 is close to our answer 7.82 then we can say that that answer is a reasonable answer okay so why can we write uh, 4.7 as 4.70 okay we'll check this out you guys here's 7 tenths right here here's 70 hundredths right here they represent the same shaded area right here 7 tenths has the same area as 70 hundredths so 4.7 is going to be the same as 4.70 pretty cool all right, so why is it important to align the decimal points when adding? Well, that way, by aligning the decimal points, it ensures us that we're adding the same uh, place values in the right uh, place values right there. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's go ahead and add these four problems here. Let's line up the decimals. So let's, here we go. So they're all start with, um, uh, this is 0 0.42, and just make sure the decimals line up, okay? If you make sure the decimals line up, then we just add from right to left, okay? So um, let's do this one. So 2 plus 7 is 9, and then uh, 4 plus 2 is 6, and then 0 plus 0 is 0, so 0 0.69, okay? Over here, these add up to 9, these add up to 3, these add up to 9, and then 0, so 0 0.939. Okay, this one is 7.85. Okay, this one we're going to have to regroup because 7 plus 8 is 15. So we'll put a 1 right here and a 5 down here. Okay, I'll talk you through that as we... Here's the answer right here. So it's 15 and then... Um, 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So there's the 1 for the 11 and the 10 spot right there. And then 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 1 is another 10. So there's that right there. And so remember we had 11 right there. And then so this 1 plus 1 is 2 right there. Okay, easy enough. Just make sure the decimals are lined up. So when you subtract decimals, the procedure for subtracting decimals is the same as uh, for adding decimals. We just make sure that the, the decimals line up and then we subtract from right to left. Okay, here's an example. Julie is um, uh, 160.2 centimeters tall. John is 165.1 centimeters tall. So how much taller is John than Julie? So we're going to subtract uh, John's height and Julie's height right there. Okay, so let's align the decimal points up. Okay, so just make sure the decimal points line up and we don't have to add any zeros right here. So we're just going to go ahead and subtract from right to left and then regroup where necessary. Okay, so 1 minus 2, we can't do that. So we got to borrow from this 5 and make it a 4. So we're going to cross this out, make it a 4, and this 1 becomes an 11 right there. Okay, so there's that right there. And now we can do it. 11 minus 2 is 9. 4 minus 0 is 0. Those cancel, those cancel. So we get um, uh, 4.9. Okay, did I say zero? So John is 4.9 centimeters taller than Julie right there. Easy enough, okay. And then again, we can check our answer to make sure it's reasonable uh, by rounding each decimal to the nearest whole number. So here's John, 165.1 rounds to 165, and 160.2 rounds to 160. So when we subtract those, those are that, uh, that gives us 5. So just a real quick mental check right here, you guys. And since this 5 is close to this 4.9, then the 4.9 uh, centimeters is a reasonable answer right there. So it's always good to check, you guys. All right, so here's another one. Scott throws a disc um, 58.7 meters. Bob throws a, uh, the disc uh, 56.12 meters. So how much further did Scott throw the disc than Bob? Okay, so we're going to subtract, okay? So make sure we align the decimals. 50, 58.7 is right here, and then 56.12. 
All right, what are we going to do right there? We're going to put a zero right there. So let's put a zero right there. And then we're going to subtract from right to left and regroup when necessary. Okay, zero minus two can't do it. Okay, so we're going to borrow from the seven and make it a six. Okay, so let's do that. Now we can do 10 minus 2 is uh, 8, and then 6 minus uh, 1 is 5, and then two or 8 minus 6 is 2, so 2.58. Okay, so let's answer the question. So Scott threw the disc 2.58 meters farther than Bob did, okay? All right, so and then we can, go, of course, check our answers by rounding this to the nearest whole number, which is 59. This to the nearest whole number is 56. That gives us 3, and since our answer is close to 3, then it's a good, reasonable answer right there. All right, you guys, one last question. So how can we check uh, a subtraction problem? Okay, well, that's easy. Just undo it by adding. So by adding the answer that we got to the number that we were subtracting, uh, if our answer is correct, then the sum will be the number that we uh, started with, that we subtracted from right here. So here we did, we took our answer, 2.58, and we added it to the, uh, the number that's being subtracted, the 56.12, and as long as it gets us the... Um, the top number right there, the 58.70, then our answer is going to be correct right there. All right, you guys, hope that makes sense. Hope you're having a great year, and, and be nice to your teacher.